Hi, this is Wiz from rcmf.co.uk. I'm here this afternoon playing with this uh, new three-axis flight stabiliser box from Hobby King. I think it was about $13 uh, delivered from Hong Kong. Um, I thought I really just bought it to have a play with it, see what it'd do. And uh, so here it is. I've lashed it up in my Max Thrust Riot, um, just really because that was the easiest one to get at. And uh, just to explain what happens here, I've got a little, I'm using my high tech Aurora 9 gear, there's a little Optima 7 receiver just buried in there. So the way that it works is you need a male to male servo lead that comes from the output of the receiver into the input of the flight stabiliser box here. Um, and then you've got the, the elevator output in this case. Um, from there to, to the servo. So it fits in between the receiver and the servos. Um, yeah, okay, so I've lashed it up. I've only got it lashed up at the moment on pitch and yaw. I haven't connected any ailerons up, so there's nothing on the roll side of things. Uh, just to take you through what we've got here. Uh, we've got three little pots here. These are to adjust the gain and you can that translates really as um, how much movement you get, how much correctional movement you get from the norm. And it's worth mentioning here what the norm is and you might be thinking well is that you know straight and level is that uh, when it's on the ground? Well no it seems to be to me um, whatever the last known position is with no controlled input. So for instance um, if you're in a dive it will soon get to know that that, um, that that attitude is normal and regard that as normal and then any deviation from that will result in some correction or adjustment to the uh, control surfaces. So we've got the pots there, we've got some little very tiny dip switches there um, which is the reverse function on each of the three um, outputs. Now you might be thinking well, that's a normal servo reverse so why would you have those? Well this is what I figure so far from a little bit of testing. Um, my Aurora 9 was set up with the rudder reversed and when I plugged it all in uh, the control from the transmitter was absolutely normal um, as you might expect but the correctional control was wrong. It was actually um, compounding any, any deviation from the norm um, and therefore, like on the rudder, for example, could result in a kind of downward spiral, um, ever decreasing circles. So that's not great. So what this allows you to do here, it not only reverses the direction of the servo, but it also reverses the direction of the correction. So what I had to do was on the A9, put the uh, servo output to normal and use the dip switch here to reverse it and that's going to be some very clever playing with it. It's kind of a bit of a, um, yeah, it sort of screws with the brain a little bit. Um, so, uh, yeah, you need to pay a bit of attention to that. So there it is, it's all hooked up. So what does it do? Well, let's have a look. We'll look at it in the, in the yaw first, which is the rudder control, if you like. And I'll just take you to the rear of the aircraft here so we can see what we're doing. And so here we are, merry toddling around in the air or on the ground, trying to get that. And all of a sudden, a bit of a, a bit of turbulence, a bit of wind takes to one direction, and you'll see there the rudder corrects. Now, as I say, without that dip switch reversed, uh, with the reversed output from the transmitter, that was actually compounding the issue. It's kind of difficult to video this, but you can see as I do it the rudder's actually moving. And see what I mean by the norm is whatever the last known position was without control input. If I move it to a position and hold it, you'll see it corrects and then centers. So let's do it now the other way. And you'll see it return to normal. Okay? That's the best way I can, I can explain it. And that seems to do what it should. Now, here I've run into an issue um, on the elevator, so on pitch. And let me just show you about this. This raised some interesting issues, actually, uh, particularly around tail draggers. Now, you know, if you're like me and try and get the tail on the ground to get a bit of speed up um, before you actually apply a little bit of up elevator, um, you can probably imagine what's going to happen. So I raise the tail, 
and the gain is set such that I'm not going to be getting a lot of movement. So let me just adjust the gain here, if I can, so we can get a bit of exaggerated movement. So I'm just going for the pitch control here and wind that up. And now, if I just move the plane, you'll see the uh, the actual servo is moving now. So here we go, back to the rear. So I'm toddling along there quite nicely down the strip, holding a bit of uh, holding it on the ground. Suddenly the tail lifts up, which the flight stabilizer sees as the nose dipping, and probably applies enough up to kick the thing off the ground. I'm not, I've not flown it in this configuration yet. I'm not sure I'm going to, and I'll tell you why in just a moment, but again here you'll see that as it pitches up and down, so the control surfaces compensate. Quite how much gain you need, I don't know. And that brings us to another point, which is the, um, uh, the gain controls, I think, are probably logarithmic pots. Uh, which is not terribly clever because there's very, very little difference between nothing and about 70%, and then it all happens in about the last 70%. So that's not ideal, really. Um, I seem to get all or nothing um, when I'm trying to adjust them. So there we have it. That's working. Now, what's this issue I've got? Well, it's this, and this is the reason I'm not going to try and fly it. And I'll try and show you this the best I can. Um, 